Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to the very first episode of Call of Duty In-Depth. In this series, instead of talking about a particular Call of Duty game, such as Black Ops, Modern Warfare 2, 3, or Black Ops 2, or anything like that, we're going to be talking about the Call of Duty engine in general, such that it applies to any game. For this particular video, I'm going to be going through pretty much all of the submachine guns in Black Ops, because they're very relevant to what I've got to talk about today, which is damage versus rate of fire. We're going to talk about damage in the game, we're going to talk about rate of fire, more importantly, we're going to talk about their interaction with each other and most importantly of all we're going to talk about optimal balancing between damage and rate of fire to have effective weapons fair weapons and how to avoid overpowered weapons the first thing that we're going to talk about today is the first thing that we've talked about for pretty much every single in-depth episode ever and that's damage guns in call of duty games are programmed with a variable damage they deal a constant damage up to about eight to ten meters and then they start dropping down they start losing damage until they hit a minimum point usually about 20 to maybe 40 meters out kind of depending on what sort of weapon it is so they deal a lot of damage up close but very little damage at a distance and a lot of people ask me well which is more important is the up close damage more important or is the distance damage more important and I usually tell people it depends on what kind of gun you're using for assault rifles and occasionally some light machine guns will have a damage drop you want to go with that initial damage because they keep that initial damage for quite a distance most of your engagements in Call of Duty games are at medium range they're kind of designed that way not quite as many up close engagements not too many far away engagements so you hit a lot of mid uh, middle range engagements and assault rifles are doing their initial damage there for submachine guns and pistols and a handful of other specialty weapons like machine pistols that final damage that damage way out at the end of the curve is going to be more important because at medium range they're doing their very minimal damage however more important than both of these factors is shots to kill a weapon can deal more damage than another weapon but still have the exact same shots to kill for instance a weapon that deals 49 damage per shot and a weapon that deals 34 damage per shot both take three shots to kill and if the weapon that deals 34 damage per shot shoots faster it'll kill faster and that's more important and that's kind of leading into our next topic which is rate of fire the rates of fire on weapons in Call of Duty games are programmed based on the time between shots. It sounds counterintuitive because you think that a weapon shoots at a certain speed, but the programmers decided to build this game and its rates of fire on delays between shots. So when you look at the code, instead of saying X gun shoots at 500 RPM, it'll say X gun has uh, one tenth of a second delay between its shots, and that kind of is how you get your rate of fire. I've always presented this to you in its inverse format, rounds per minute, because that's what pretty much everybody uses it's much easier to ingest and understand that way but we're gonna need to know about that delay between shot fa uh, factor for what's coming up next which is a time to kill calculation time to kill is theoretically the most important factor for guns in theory anyway the most important thing about any gun you're using is how fast you can kill the other person because you have to kill them faster than they can kill you in MMO games and uh, Unreal games and games where you have tons and tons of health, damage per second is usually used, but for Call of Duty games, because you die very, very quickly, the time to kill is usually what's reported. The formula for time to kill is D, which as I have noted here, is the time between shots multiplied by the number of shots to kill, which we get from our damage, minus one. The minus one might sound a little bit confusing, but we added that in there because the first shot that you shoot theoretically takes no time. As soon as you pull the trigger in Call of Duty game, the shot comes out and hits somebody. Uh, Battlefield has real projectiles, the bullet has a velocity, it has a speed. Call of Duty uses hit scans, so as soon as you look at somebody and the instant you pull that trigger pop, their head is gone, at least in LAN, I know there's a little bit of lag online, but the hit, the tracers that you see, the things that you see flying all over the screen are always delayed laid and they're very very fast to give you the feel that you can see the bullet coming out but the actual bullet the thing that kills people is an invisible uh, instant projectile a hit scan and again just whatever the end of your gun is pointing at and as soon as you pull the trigger that's instant so it took pretty much no time so the time to kill is based on however many other shots to kill besides that first one it has to hit somebody to kill them and we use this formula to get time to kill which in theory is a good way to understand how deadly your weapon is According to this theory, damage and rate of fire should be inversely proportional to each other to achieve perfect balance. And inversely proportional means they're kind of negatively related. Let's assume that there's a theoretical submachine gun out there that deals 25 damage per shot. It doesn't have any drop-off or anything. 
and there's another theoretical submachine gun out there that deals 50 damage per shot with no drop off or anything. They both have the exact same accuracy and reload and everything else. In order to balance these two weapons, the submachine gun that deals 50 damage per shot will make it shoot at like 100 RPM. That's a, actually that's a pretty slow submachine gun. We'll put it at like 500 RPM. And the submachine gun that only deals 25 damage per shot because it's half as much and needs to shoot twice as fast, it should shoot at 1000 RPM and therefore they would have exactly equal time to kills and theoretically they they would be perfectly balanced. I made it a point to mention the accuracy on the submachine guns because this is true only if you never miss a single shot. If you miss just one shot, we're going to have to change up the formula and we're going to have to break up these parentheses and add in an extra variable in between shots to kill and the minus one. We could name it I for inaccuracy, M for missing, or D for drifter because I miss a lot and I'm dumb sometimes and spray and pray. Whatever you want to name it, that adds time and it's essentially adding the amount of time, however much delay there was between shots on the gun, that much more your shots to kill increase. So accuracy is actually a very important factor and it's kind of the third screwball factor that helps balance all of these weapons because if those were the only two things to consider it would be a very very boring game. It would be a two-dimensional game. I could plot all the guns on a little graph and uh, I could theoretically invent infinite new guns based on that little relationship and it would just be very boring. Accuracy adds a third dimension to this balance so we get a three-dimensional graph but in game since accuracy is a 3D thing it becomes much much more complicated than we have a 4D graph and then you have to consider player skill and lots of other variables. For an ideal balance, a weapon that has high damage and high RPM should also have high recoil. For example, from Modern Warfare 3, the PM9 submachine gun has high damage for the submachine gun class. It has a pretty good amount of shots to kill, or fairly low amount of shots to kill, I should say. And it has a very high RPM, and they balance the weapon by adding very, very high recoil. As a matter of fact, it was a little bit too high to begin with, but it's much better now. To go the exact opposite route, a weapon that has low damage and low rate of fire should also have low recoil, and my best example from this would be the ACR from Modern Warfare 2. It was one of the lowest damage assault rifles in the game. Matter of fact, I think it was the lowest damage assault rifle in the game. I don't have those stats available, and its rate of fire was nothing particularly impressive. It didn't even have that great a range, but it had excellent, excellent recoil. It didn't have to worry about missing your shots, so it still maintained its place as a fairly balanced assault rifle. I particularly liked it for the low recoil, but lots of professional players didn't not. Now that we're up to three balancing factors being damage, rate of fire, and balance, it would only be fair to mention the others. You have magazine size. For example, in Call of Duty 4, the Scorpion had a much lower magazine than other submachine guns. It had high damage, up close at least. It had a high rate of fire compared to some of the other machine guns. It was very, very accurate, but it had a brutally low magazine size. It also had a range component that was very low. That's another important balancing factor. The reload time was very slow on the weapon, depending... Oh man, my Skype just booped. I hope that didn't get in the commentary. Depending on what kind of weapon it is, the time to aim down sights could be a balancing factor, or maybe even its hip fire accuracy so that you don't even need to aim down sights, or maybe even its run speed. That's why you run really, really slow with the light machine guns. It helps balance the weapons out. At the very end of the video, you have to ask, what does this mean for you guys? The best way that I can sum this up is the way I see it, and I see high damage, low rate of fire weapons being skill and precision weapons. Generally speaking, they have faster time to kills than other weapons, but you get a big penalty for missing because your low rate of fire means your second shot is coming slower. Also, these weapons tend to be a little bit higher in the overall or per shot recoil. Low damage, high rate of fire weapons tend to be spray and prey weapons, or as I like to call them, high mobility weapons. These are maybe more objective player weapons, whereas high damage, low rate of fire weapons are more sit back and camp kind of weapons. The time to kills are generally a little bit slower, again depending on the balance, but you have a lesser penalty for missing your shots, which means if you're running, if you're dolphin diving, if you're shooting, if you're run playing crazy, kind of like me, you're probably going to side more with the high rate of fire weapons as opposed to the high damage weapons. So before you choose a weapon, you really need to sit back and analyze your playstyle. You need to think, are you a rusher? Are you a mid-range player? Are you a straight-up camper? And that'll really help you choose what kind of weapon fits you best and what weapon you'll be able to use best. Well guys, that's all for this show. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you learned something useful. This is the first episode of Call of Duty in depth, so I've never really done anything like this, and I'd appreciate your feedback on it. Please leave a comment, tell me what you think, what I did wrong, what I could have done better, etc, etc. Also, please let me know about the video quality. I've upgraded my capture cards, and this is my first 1080p Call of Duty commentary ever, well, for console gameplay, that is, so let me know what you think about the video quality. And for the very last part of this video, I'm going to swap over to my webcam so you can take a look at my beautiful sexy face.